Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video on the transformations of graphs. In this video, we're going to look at the transformations of the trig graphs, or the trigonometric graphs. Now, before you watch this video, it can be useful to watch four of our videos in Corbett Maths. They are the transformations of graphs video, which go through the four transformations needed at GCSE level. Also watch the videos on the trig graphs, so the y equals sine x graph, the y equals cos x graph, and the y equals tan x graph. And those videos give you an idea as to what those graphs look like. Okay, so first of all, let's just recap what our transformations are at GCSE level that we need to know. We've got in blue our reflections, and we've got in red our translations. So our reflections, we've got y equals minus f of x. That transformation will reflect the graph in the x-axis. So the points above the x-axis will go below the x-axis, and the points below the x-axis will go above the x-axis. And the points on the x-axis will stay where they are. They'll be invariant. Then we've got our y equals f of minus x. That's a reflection in the y-axis. So the points on the right-hand side of the y-axis will reflect to the left-hand side, and vice versa. And the points on the y-axis will be invariant. They'll stay where they are. Then we've got our translations. So we've got y equals f of x plus a, where the plus a is outside of the brackets. That'll move the graph a units upwards. So if it was plus 1, the graph would move 1 upwards. If it was minus 3, it would move 3 downwards, and so on. And then finally, we've got y equals f of x plus a, and that will translate the graph a squared to the left. So all the points on the graph will move a to the left. Okay, so they're the transformations we need to know at GCSE level. Let's just have a quick recap of the trig graphs. So we've got y equals sin x, y equals cos x, and y equals tan x. And these are all in degrees at GCSE level. They'll all be in degrees. So we've got our y equals sin x, and I've sketched it between 0 and 360 degrees. So as you can see, it starts at the origin, goes up to 90 degrees and 1, goes down to 180 degrees and 0, 270 degrees and minus 1, and up to 360 degrees and 0. And I'll just carry on. And we could also draw for the negative values of x also, and they would just carry on going down and up and so on. Our y equals cos x graph, well, it starts at 0, 1, then reaches 90 degrees and 0, 180 degrees and minus 1, and then it starts coming up again, and it just carries on. And then we've got our y equals tan x graph, and that's the graph with the asymptotes, those lines where the graph never reach. So we've starts off at the origin, it curves upwards, we've got our asymptote, and then after 90 degrees it comes upwards, reaches 180 degrees and 0, and then it curves upwards and just carries on like that. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. So our first question says, here's the graph of y equals sine x for values of x between minus 180 degrees and 180 degrees. So here's the sine x graph. And we've been asked to sketch y equals minus sine x. So as you can see, that is our first transformation here, our y equals minus f of x. So that is a reflection in the x-axis. So it flips the graph over vertically. Now, whenever I'm doing a question like this with trig graphs, what I tend to do is focus on the key points. So points such as the minus 180 degrees and 0, minus 90 degrees and 1 this point, or 0, 0, and so on. And I consider where they go after we apply the transformation. So we're reflecting this graph in the x-axis. So the points on the x-axis will be invariant. They will stay where they are, 180 degrees and 0, 0, 0, minus 180 degrees and 0. The point that is above the x-axis, this 90 and 1, will reflect below, so it'll become 90 and minus 1. And the point below the x-axis, our minus 90 degrees minus 1, will reflect above the x-axis, so reflect up to there. And then all we need to do is draw a smooth curve through those points, and that will be the graph y equals minus sine x. And I'm going to cheat. There we go. So the graph would look something like that. And that is the sketch of our graph y equals minus sine x. Okay, our next question. So our next question we've been asked to sketch y equals sine of brackets minus x. So as you can see, the minus sine is inside the brackets. So it's going to be this transformation here, our reflection in the y-axis. So the points on the left-hand side of the y-axis will go to the right, and to the points on the right will go to the left, and the points on the y-axis will stay where they are. Okay, so let's have a look at our graph. So we've got our sine x graph. And we know the points on the y-axis will stay where they are. So the, the point at 0, 0 will remain where it is. The point at 90 degrees and 1, that will be reflected to minus 90 degrees and 1. So that will go there. The point at 180 degrees and 0, well, that will be reflected to minus 180 degrees and 0. The point that's at minus 90, minus 1 will be reflected to be 90 degrees and minus 1 there. And finally, the point that was at minus 180 degrees 0 will be reflected to 180 degrees 0. So the key points would look something like that. And then all we need to do is draw a nice smooth curve through it, and it would look something like that. So that is the graph of y equals sine of minus x. Okay, so our next question. So in this question, we've been given the graph of y equals cos x for values of x between 0 and 360. And we've been asked to sketch y equals cos x 
plus one. So as you can see, we've got our plus one, and it's not in the bracket, so it's just adding one to the whole answer of cos x. So that will move the graph one up vertically. So it's going to translate the graph one upwards. So let's have a look at our key points. So the key points in this graph are 0, 1. Well, that's going to move up one, so it's going to become 0, 2. The point at 90, 0 will move up to 90, 1. The point that was at 180 degrees minus 1 will move up to 180 degrees 0. The point that was at 270 degrees 0 will move up to 270 1. And finally, the point that was at 360 degrees 1 will move up to 360 degrees and 2. Okay, And then if we just draw a nice smooth curve through them, our graph would look something like that. So that would be the graph of y equals cos x degrees plus 1. So our next question says, here's the graph of y equals cos x. So we've got the cos x graph again. And this time we've been asked to sketch the graph y equals cos x minus 3. And our minus 3 is outside of the bracket. So again, it's going to be a translation. So it's going to be this transformation here. And instead of moving 3 squares upwards, because it's minus 3, it's going to move 3 squares downwards. So our graph will move 3 down. So the point at 0, 1 would move down. If we take 3 away from 1, we get minus 2. The point at 90, 0 would move to 90 minus 3. The point at 180 degrees minus 1 would move to 180 degrees minus 4. The point at 270 degrees 0 will move down to 270 degrees minus 3. And finally, the point that was at 360 degrees 1 will move down to 360 degrees minus 2. So the key points would be in those positions. So all we need to do now is draw a nice smooth curve through them, and it would look something like that. Okay, our next question, we've been given y equals cos x again. Now this time we've been asked to sketch y equals cos x plus 180 degrees. So we've got our plus 180 inside the brackets. So it is our translation horizontally. So we're translating the graph. If it's plus a in the brackets, it moves it a squares to the left. So we're going to be moving this graph 180 degrees to the left. So if we have a look at our key points, well, our point is 0, 1. Well, that's going to move 180 degrees to the left. So that's not going to be on the axes. So we're actually going to start at this point here, our 180 degrees minus 1. Now, with this translation, we're moving it 180 degrees to the left. So it's going to move it from 180 degrees to 0. So it's going to move to here. OK, our next point, that was at 270 degrees 0. We're moving it 180 to the left. So whenever we take 180 away from 270, it brings us to 90. So it's going to be 90, 0. The point that was at 360, well, if we move it 180 degrees to the left, it will move to here. So as you can see, the shape of our graph is starting to form here. So if we carried on our normal cos x graph, we would have 450 and 0. Well, if we move that 180 degrees to the left, it would move to 270 degrees and 0. And our last point will be here. And as you can see, if we draw a nice smooth curve through them, it would look something like that. OK, our next question. Now, our next question, we've been given the graph of y equals cos x. So we've got the cos x graph again, and we've been asked to sketch y equals cos of x minus 90 degrees. So this time, we've got minus 90 inside of our brackets. So if we have a look, it's going to be a translation. And so normally, if it's plus a, we move a squared to the left. Because it's a minus, we're going to be moving it to the right. So if we have a look at our graph, so if you have a look at minus 90, so that means we're going to be moving all the points on our graph 90 to the right. So the point that it was at 0, 1 would move to 90, 1. The point that was at 90, 0 would move to 180 degrees, 0. The point that was at 180 degrees minus 1 would move to 270 degrees minus 1. The point that was at 270 degrees, 0, would move to 360 degrees and 0, and so on. Now, as you can see, we haven't got a point here for 0, but as you can tell from the shape of the graph, you can figure out it's going to be at the origin. But if we just went back to 90 degrees, it cos of minus 90 is 0. And if we move it 90 to the right, it would bring you there. And if we draw a nice smooth curve for it, our next example, because we haven't looked at tan, and I don't want to leave tan out, here's a graph of y equals tan x. And we've got the tan x graph between 0 and 360 degrees. So as you can see, we've got asymptotes at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So we've been asked to sketch the graph of y equals minus tan of x. So that's going to be a reflection because we've got our minus sign, and it's in front of the function. It's in front of the tan, so that's mean it's going to be a vertical reflection. It's going to be a reflection in the x-axis. So all the points above the x-axis will go below the x-axis, and the points below the x-axis will go above the x-axis, and the points that are on the x-axis will remain invariant. So our 0, 0, our 180 degrees and 0, and our 360 degrees and zero who will remain where they are and the graph will come down and it would look something like this whenever we sketched it so it'll go below there'll be a mirror image above there and below 
a reflect like that, and that's it. So with the transformations of trig graphs, very important that you know the transformations. So watch that video on Corporate Mavs if you need a recap. So make sure you know the four transformations at GCSE level, our reflection vertically, our reflection horizontally, our translation vertically up and down, and our translation horizontally, okay? So know those four transformations, and it's also useful to know your trig graphs. So know what the sine x graph looks like, the cos x graph, and the tan x graph. And then it's just a matter of applying those transformations. And whenever you're applying the transformations, it can be really useful to consider the key points and consider where they move whenever you apply the transformation. And that's it.